I hope you're ready for a brand new era of things actually not being that much different than they always were because it's time for an honest to god actual video about a Xenogears topic that only covers Xenogears and no other game so uh yeah Myong is goddamn scary. I'm not even going to say anything else about her without the obligatory massive Xenogear spoiler warning because, wow, she's actually quite terrifying. Basically, this is going to be a video talking about why that is the case. It's going to be a discussion of her history, her abilities, and then basically explaining how terrifying she really is by showing how she's pretty much to blame for the entire events of the game. So, yeah, I got my work cut out for me. Let's do this. Probably the first thing you need to know is that Miang is tied directly to Ellie. The original Ellie was created by Abel, the sole survivor of the Eldridge Crash, when he made contact with the biocomputer called Katamoni that exists in the center of Zohar. His instincts and desire for a mother created a mother figure for him in the original Ellie, but the ship's crash triggered a program called System Hawa, which transformed the original Ellie into the original Miang who is the version of her you see in the opening cutscene. This OG Miang then developed a biological assembler plant in order to start making parts for Deus to repair and revive itself. From this, she created the first humans, Kane and the Gazelle Ministry, and from them, all the other humans on the planet are descended. After this, she split herself with Ellie basically going back to what she originally was, and Miang herself existing as a separate entity for the first time. This Ellie kept her original personality as the kind and caring mother figure Abel wished for, and then later on, when they were reincarnated at the same age, they became fated to always fall in love, while Myung instead was a manager of humanity with the sole role of trying to resurrect Deus. These are the three big characters that reincarnate for the entire 10,000 year history of the Xenogears planet. Abel is the contact who first came in contact with the Zohar, Ellie is known as the Antitype, and Miang is the complement. There's a bit of a lost in translation thing because Miang's real name is actually the reverse of Ellie. Ellie is Eleheim, and in Japanese, or in the Japanese versions of the game, Miang is actually Maya. And if you reverse the way they chose to spell Eleheim, you get Maya Eleem, or Maya exists here. I said before that Miang reincarnates. She does so, but in a different way than the contact and antitype do. Those two are just reborn as children. Basically, when one incarnation dies, eventually at some point it's not really clear, some random baby is born as just a baby version of what that person originally was, and they don't keep their memories or anything. It's basically only the awakened contact who can get that back. Myung instead exists genetically. Every woman on the planet has the potential to become her. When her current incarnation dies, another random woman on the planet awakens as Myung. Typically, her hair color will change to Myung's purple, and she is now just Myung. Every incarnation inherits the memories of all the previous ones and just completely takes over the body, which has the added effect of basically killing the original personality of the host. There are two instances where we can see that it is still present, but the original inhabitant of that body, for all intents and purposes, can't do anything anymore once she becomes young. Now, genetically, this doesn't really make any sense. The closest thing to what the game is implying for how her reincarnation works is an X chromosome linked disease that only shows up in people with two X chromosomes, but I don't think that's a thing in real life. But it's game science logic, it's connected to the Zohar, you don't actually need to explain anything with realistic anything. So that's basically how that exists. It is represented by something that just somehow only exists in women called the Orobolus ring, which is seen when Ellie's DNA is imaged. This is another mistranslation, it's supposed to be Ouroboros. I don't really know how they missed that one. But yeah, the symbolism of this serpent eating its own tail very much fits with this whole thing of rebirth. I believe it's also supposed to reference how a child is born of its mother and that kind of thing, both of which very much fit Myung doing her thing. She is the metaphorical mother of humanity and also very literally the mother of humanity 
and also has a looping type incarnation through women, I guess sort of through other mothers, although they're not all mothers. Anyway, throughout the history of the planet, there are 999 incarnations of Myung. I have no idea whether or not this counts the original one. Like, is OG Ellie right after System Hawa Myung 1, or is she Myung 0, and then after the split, she becomes Myung 1? Or were those two collectively Myung 1? Or are they Myung 1 and 2? Or are they both collectively Myung 0, and after that one died, the next one became Myung 1? It doesn't really matter, but it's, I guess, worth pointing out that, yeah, that is not really fully explained. Motivation-wise, she has one goal, which was basically programmed into her by System Hawa. Manipulate humanity until its genetic material is good enough for it to serve as parts to repair and resurrect Deus. She actually has certain limitations on what she's capable of doing based on that programming, suggesting that since her mind is effectively artificial in origin, I mean, most of humanity is technically artificial in origin in the game, but she actually has programming in her mind beyond stuff that was put in there by Young because the rest of humanity has that. But anyway, she has certain limitations on her actions. Presumably, she can't do things that go directly against her goal to resurrect Deus. But the big thing is she is unable to commit suicide and intentionally force herself to reincarnate. She gets around this, though, by being a master manipulator and being able to pull off some major plans remarkably well without having to fight much, if at all. She has fought several times, and most of them is just a support for Remsis. She is really good at sticking into the shadows and drawing attention away from herself, which is a good skill to have when your entire job is covertly manipulating and shaping the future of humanity. She is, however, also the Executioner, a guardian angel of Solaris, and partner to both Groff and Krellian, which shows that she is an extremely powerful ether user and fighter in general. This does make sense. She's probably able to retain knowledge of various fighting techniques throughout all of her incarnations, but the downside is she would probably need to retrain each successive body in order to be able to use them because her body doesn't come back. Abel and Ellie's reincarnations, they all develop the exact same body because they have the same body as the original version of themselves. Presumably if they chose different lifestyles, like if one Abel just decided to be completely sedentary and didn't train like Faye did, he obviously wouldn't look like the original Abel, he'd be an overweight version of the original Abel, but I think genetically all those incarnations are the same. Well, Myung just hijacks another person's body, so she would need to train each different body and get a feel for how to use each one in combat. She also seems to be a relatively competent gear pilot. She pilots two gears throughout the game. The first is a Vierge of a similar model to Ellie's, which she uses supporting Ramses in multiple gears. And the second is the Nano Machine Enhanced Gear Opiomorph, which is fought by the party and ends up being one of the harder boss fights in the game. This gear's animal relic was apparently aligned during the Shavat Solaris War 500 years ago, which suggests that Myung herself is capable of aligning with an anima relic, and that her ability to do so transfers between hosts, instead of her having to rely on whether or not her current host is compatible. We know that anima compatibility can be passed through bloodlines, but because of the way Myung works, all of her incarnations aren't necessarily blood-related to each other. Yeah, they're all descended from her because they're all humans, but just because one before being taken over by her was able to use an Omnigear doesn't mean the next one will, so it seems likely that Myung specifically has the ability to align with whatever Anima Relic is an Opiomorph, and she just uses that as a weapon whenever she needs to use an Omnigear. So... We're just going to go over a quick chronology of her most important incarnations across the most important time periods in the 10,000 year history of the planet. After the split from Ellie, she incarnates for millennia, and we know nothing of what she did other than the fact that she probably helped build up and destroy societies trying to shape humanity into becoming food for Deus. About 6,000 years after the Eldritch Crash, Myung awakens in a set of identical twins at the same time. This is apparently something that just 
happens sometimes, I guess because of the way identical twins share DNA, but these twins are considered Myung's 661 and 662. This is during the Zaboim era, a time when civilization greatly resembled the modern day, or at least the modern day as of the time the game was made. There is a modern level of technology, society seemed the same, even styles of clothing and potentially even government were similar. The big difference though is that people were genetically damaged. They had very high infertility rates and short lifespans, frequently dying at around the age of 30, which meant that they were wholly unfit parts for Deus. And so the twin Myongs began manipulating the government. At one point, they discovered the scientist Kim Kasim's thesis on nanotechnology and decided to support his work, which directly led to the creation of Emeralda. So I guess she sort of shot herself in the foot there, but M was useful to her plans a couple millennia down the road, so it was all good in the end. Kim did eventually grow suspicious of the government, though, and when Myung sent people to retrieve his work by force, the Ellie of that era got killed, and Kim sealed himself away with Emeralda, presumably dying and reincarnating again because Kim was the able of that time period. It's not really known whether or not Myung knew that he was the contact, although she was probably able to guess that his wife was the antitype because, you know, her name was Ellie, and the antitype is always named Ellie for some reason. After his death and the loss of Emeralda, Myung saw no more use in the civilization and basically manipulated things into nuclear war, which more or less reset humanity. A long, long time later, in the year 9164 after the Eldridge crash, humanity begins nearing its final stage necessary for the day's plan. Myung, Kane, and the Ministry decide to form the country of Solaris in order to better control humanity and start taking over the surface. This is also when the Soylent systems on the surface were built in order to directly turn the humans into parts for Deus. And this is also when the Anti-Solaris Alliance formed around the nation of Shavad. Bizarrely, tensions were able to be kept relatively low for a few more centuries, as it wasn't until the year 9496 that the Shavat solaris War began. The Ministry wanted to start the resurrection at this time, but Myung thought it was too early and managed to convince them to stop. This is the era of the Abel Incarnation Wakan and the Ellie Incarnation Mother Sophia. In 9501, Myung lets herself fall into a deal to be exchanged as a prisoner of Shavat for Mother Sophia. This directly leads to Sophia's death and puts Myung in a position to speak to Lakan, Abel's current incarnation who blames himself for Sophia's passing, because, you know, she was the Ellie and they were fated lovers and stuff. She manages to convince Lakan that he can gain more power and takes him to where Zohar was buried. Lakan was so emotionally damaged that he couldn't completely awaken as the contact, only getting a partial awakening, still a lot of power, and the personality of Gruff awoke within him. This then led to the event known as the Diabolos Collapse, in which most of humanity was wiped out. Again. And Myung was responsible for both times. And it's implied that she's done this multiple times that we don't even hear about because of the amount of civilizations that should be there but we know absolutely nothing about. Again, goddamn terrifying. At some point, most likely just after the Diablos collapse, she also met up with a disillusioned Krellian and joined forces with him. Also around this time, it's likely that she was involved in the creation of the Religion of Ethos, which was designed specifically to even further control the masses. We then skip ahead a bit to the year 9959, in which Krellian meets up with Myong number 996, and they begin the fifth stage of their big Grandmaster plan. In 9975, Myong and Krellian create Ramses. And then in 9985, Myong 996 dies of old age, and she awakens in the body of Karen Wong, mother of a little boy named Fei Fong Wong, who just so happens to be the current incarnation of the Contact. She starts experimenting on Fei when his father's away in order to try and forcibly awaken his powers, giving him massive psychological damage and leading directly to the creation of the personality of Id. Ten months after she turns, Groff shows up trying to take Fei. Myung does nothing, she doesn't care if any of that happens, 
intending to just let it go by, but somehow Karen's personality manages to surface again, allowing her to sacrifice herself to save Faye. This then causes Myung to awaken in body number 998, a student at Yugen Military Academy in Solaris, and a classmate of Karen Ramses. She begins using this position to manipulate him, acting as his lover, but also tormenting and insulting him and just generally damaging his already very shattered psyche and inferiority complex and working her way up to the position of his assistant within Gebler, all the while secretly actually working with Krellian behind the scenes to control literally everything. And then in year 9999, actual Xenu Gears happens. She does all her work in the background, only assisting Ramses in fights when not wearing the Executioner's Mask. The only non-Executioner time she's fought directly is in her own Omni Gear, which is actually right after fighting Ramses in his Omni Gear, so it's still basically tied to him, and it's in a situation she knows she can't lose, so it seems like she's really good at not letting herself get killed until it's actually necessary to proceed with the plan. She's also, again, intentionally broke Ramses so much specifically so he'll kill her at a specific moment in time, which is what allowed her to awaken for the final time within Ellie, finally recombining the anti-type and the complement, allowing for Deus to finally be reawakened and fulfilling her purpose. It's arguable whether or not you could consider Myung to have a personality at all just based on what she is and what she does, but when Deus is reawakened, any sense of self she might have had is completely eliminated because she fuses with Deus, becomes one with him, allows everything to start happening again. Ellie's consciousness does still exist though, which is explained a bit later on. The last time we see her is when she summoned one more time as Krellian's final test for Faye after beating the final boss, this time in a monstrous form representative of the Aerobolus in a borderline unlosable fight, as in you have to be trying to lose this fight and don't lose this fight because you'll have to fight Deus again and see like 20 minutes of cutscenes before you get another chance. This is either just her power, the power of the Aerobolus ring itself, or some last dregs of Deus. This is not her physical form or anything. At this point, she was absorbed by Deus entirely. And in fact, everyone present in this scenario, Krellian is basically ascending to a higher dimension, while Faye, Ellie, and even Xenogears itself had basically been absorbed by Deus and are basically just restored by Krellian after all. Ellie comes back because her consciousness survived and Krellian released her, so the body she comes back with is technically a copy, not the original one that was taken over by Myung, which technically, I guess, sort of could go to explain why she isn't Myung anymore. But also, defeating Aerobolus destroyed the Aerobolus ring itself and her ability to reincarnate, actually killing her and freeing anyone from ever having to be Myung again. So yeah, I think you can see why... Myung is terrifying. She is a villain who completely succeeded in the plan she laid and was working with for 10,000 years. She's also an incredible manipulator, for the most part, getting people to do things for her, and the only time she really does things on her own is as part of her cover to draw suspicion away from herself. Executioner basically exists as a way to sort of oversee Solaris a bit better because, remember, as the Executioner, she is, she is a guardian angel of Solaris. She's on the same level of authority as Satan, except she reports directly to Krellian, who's actually in charge, instead of Satan, who reports to the Emperor, who is a complete puppet leader. So she is in charge of everything at all times, and basically things only stop playing into her plan once the gang actually manages to destroy Deus, which it turns out was more or less Krellian manipulating her behind her manipulating everything else. So yeah, the only time she gets outdone is when she's manipulated behind her own back. But let's see, she is responsible for basically all conflict in the game, like every villain and all of the characters, I guess technically besides Faye and Ellie, were created by her or indirectly resulted from her. Let's see. Kane, the Gazelle Ministry, she created. Groff, she's directly responsible for the existence of. All of Solaris, she's directly responsible for the existence of. Krellian, she enabled. Ramses, she literally designed in a test tube. She is pretty much the main villain of the game, even though 
you're convinced that it's the Emperor or Krillian or Ramses at various points in time, and never really do you see her as being the main one in charge of everything, even though she more or less is. Again, Deus is technically the main villain and the final antagonist, but Deus has zero personality and doesn't really do anything besides sit there, be awakened, and fight. Meanwhile, Myung, basically being his mouthpiece and his agent in the world, is the one really doing everything, and I would argue, the real main antagonist. And then just also, on a personal level, the fact that just randomly one person in the world is overwritten and becomes her. Like, just imagine, you get a pretty good indication of how Faye feels about his mother awakening as Myung, but what if it was your mother? Or someone you knew? If you're into girls, imagine, oh, your girlfriend is all of a sudden not herself anymore and is Myung. It's just a terrifying thought, and yeah, I can't stress enough how I am genuinely unnerved by her character, and... In doing so, I can definitely say that she's a very well-made villain. I enjoy hating her, so good job. That's that's a good villain. A lot of villains, especially in the Xeno series, are made at least like sort of sympathetic or have a backstory that explains their reasoning behind their actions. But nope, she is just that. It's definitely an indication of how evil for evil's sake is very much something that can be done well. But yeah, that's the end of the video. I feel like I had some inaccuracies here, but on the whole, I hope I did a good job doing an actual Honest to God Xenogears video that doesn't talk about another game at all. I hope you people liked it, because I liked making this. This is kind of something I wanted to get off my chest the instant I started seeing her do her thing, which is just... Ugh. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't played Xenogears... I'm sorry that I spoiled basically the entire game in this video, but thank you for sticking through with this, even though you barely understood what was going on. Because that means a very, very large amount of good things for me. So, yeah, thank you. And until next time, as always, this is Luxon, signing off.